So what precisely happens in Act 3 of Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet? Let's find out. How's it going Revision Squad? It's me, Liam, aka Mr Knight, aka Dystopia Junkie, and in this video I will be summarising what happens in Act 3 of Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. Now quite a bit happens in this part of the play, and so I really do hope that this video helps you out as you are studying or revising it. And if it does, you can let me know by giving this video a like, writing a comment on it, sharing it with anyone else who you think might find it helpful and of course if you aren't already subscribing to my channel. Any of that stuff would mean absolutely loads so thank you so much in advance. All right so act three scene one takes place out in the streets of Verona. Mercutio and Benvolio enter and Benvolio announces that it is a particularly hot day which might explain why Mercutio is in a particularly feisty mood. Tybalt enters the scene and makes an attempt at speaking politely with Mercutio and Benvolio. Mercutio is having none of it though, and so he looks to start a fight. A little bit later, Romeo turns up, and this prompts Tybalt to get angry and express his hatred for Romeo. Romeo, though, he doesn't bite back and instead attempts to defuse the situation. Romeo's peacefulness angers Mercutio, who draws his sword and challenges Tybalt to a fight. Tybalt rises to the challenge and likewise draws his sword. Seeing all of this happen suddenly, Romeo begs Mercutio to put his sword away, but Mercutio and Tybalt ignore his pleas and begin to fight. As they fight, Romeo tries to stand between them in an attempt to break them up. And as he does this, well, Tybalt stabs Mercutio under Romeo's arm and then quickly flees. Mercutio is clearly hurt by his wounds. Benvolio takes him off stage and Mercutio dies. Shortly afterwards, Tybalt returns. Now angry at the Capulet man, Romeo fights him. After a short scuffle, Romeo kills Tybalt. And then, just like Tybalt before him, flees. A whole host of characters then turn up. Prince Aeschylus, the Montague and Capulet parents, and various others. Seeing the sight of her dead nephew, Lady Capulet is very, very sad. Benvolio tries to explain what has happened here in an attempt to make Romeo not seem like a total villain. Now Prince Aeschylus thinks about what Benvolio tells him for a moment and then formally exiles Romeo from Verona, which means that he is forbidden from entering the city. Away from all that drama, Act 3, Scene 2 takes place in Juliet's room, where she is impatiently awaiting Romeo's visit. Nurse turns up, distressed. After a spot of confusion, she tells Juliet that Romeo has been banished and that Tybalt is dead killed by Romeo. Initially, Juliet is angry at Romeo for killing Tybalt, but then she quickly realises that Romeo would have only attacked Tybalt in order to defend himself. Juliet then states that she sees Romeo's banishment as being worse than the death of her entire family. As the scene comes to a close, Nurse says that she will bring Romeo to Juliet. Over in Friar Lawrence's cell, the friar informs Romeo that he has been officially banished by the prince. 
Romeo exclaims that he would rather be dead because banishment means that he cannot be with Juliet. The young Montague is very emotional in this scene. After a while, Juliet's nurse enters. She tells him that although Juliet is very sad about everything that has happened recently, she is patiently awaiting his arrival at her bedroom. Hearing that Juliet wishes to see him, Romeo's mood improves dramatically. Act 3, scene 4 takes place somewhere in the Capulet household. Here, Lord Capulet explains to Paris that Juliet is too upset by Tybalt's death to see him. Paris has presumably come to see Juliet and attempt to woo her. Despite Juliet's current sadness, Lord Capulet tells Paris that he may marry her as soon as Thursday, only a few days away. Following this, Lord Capulet commands his wife to tell Juliet that she will be getting married to Paris later this week. Act 3, scene 5 takes place only moments later and is set in Juliet's bedroom. Here, Romeo is convinced that it is daytime and so he must leave in order to not be caught breaking his exile. Juliet, though, tries to convince him that it is still night time, which means he could stay for longer. Romeo is convinced, and he then says that he would happily be captured if that is what Juliet wishes. All this mention of Romeo being captured worries Juliet, who now suddenly says that it is in fact daytime and Romeo really does need to go. Just as this is happening, Juliet's nurse arrives and tells her that Lady Capulet is on her way to talk to Juliet. And this hastens Romeo's departure. Lady Capulet enters the scene and quickly mocks Juliet, who she thinks is still upset over Tybalt's death. You know, the death that only occurred yesterday. After this, Lady Capulet speaks angrily about Romeo, and Juliet plays along, so as to not reveal her true feelings for him. Next, Lady Capulet informs Juliet that she will be married to Paris on Thursday. And this, well, this is something that Juliet completely rejects. And Lady Capulet is incredibly displeased by her daughter's refusal. With Lady Capulet thoroughly annoyed, Lord Capulet enters the scene. Much like his wife before him, he mocks Juliet for being sad. Following this, Lady Capulet explains to her husband that Juliet is refusing to marry Paris. Lord Capulet, in response to this, is confused. He literally cannot comprehend the fact that Juliet is defying him. Of course, what he does not know is that Juliet is already married, and that to marry another man would be frowned upon by God. As such, he gets really, really angry and says a lot of horribly abusive things to his daughter. Desperate, Juliet begs her father to listen to her, but he does not, and instead just insults her some more. Still really, really mad, Lord Capulet lashes out at the nurse by being incredibly rude to her. He then says that if Juliet does not obey him and marry Paris, she will be as good as dead to him. With this ultimatum delivered, he leaves. Juliet then begs her mother to delay the wedding, but Lady Capulet turns around and says that she does not care about Juliet anymore. With this cruel statement made, she also leaves. Abandoned by her parents, Juliet turns to the nurse for advice. The nurse says that Juliet should give up on Romeo, he is banished after all, and should instead just get on and marry Paris, who, she argues, is far superior to Romeo anyway. In response to this, 
Juliet tells the nurse that she will go to Friar Lawrence in order to confess her sins, namely her disrespect of her father. What Juliet reveals in secret once the nurse has left the stage, however, is that she wants to go to him to get his advice about everything that has suddenly happened. And with Juliet off to seek Friar Lawrence's wisdom, that sees Act 3 of Romeo and Juliet come to an end. Hopefully you have found this video to be informative and useful, and that you feel more confident when it comes to studying and revising Shakespeare's play as a result. If you have made it this far, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And remember, as always, that I hope that you have an awesome rest of the day. If you are revising, please do take frequent short breaks, as a burned out student is not a happy or successful student, which is what I think you deserve to be. So let me get this straight. In Act 3 of Romeo and Juliet, we have two characters killed, one character exiled, one marriage arranged, and one set of incredibly annoyed parents. How on earth is all of that going to get resolved? I guess we'll have to find out in Acts 4 and 5.